Good uh, morning, everyone. And uh, uh, it's going to be a test of my stress to try and do an hour and a half lecture in 30 minutes. Um, I um, am very uh, proud to be here. I uh, started coming to A4M back in 1998 and uh, sitting out there and looking at all these uh, distinguished speakers and uh, hoping that I could change my practice and really uh, change my life because really the reason why I got into this is because uh, uh, I was having issues with my, my wife. My wife was uh, swearing that uh, every two weeks I was changing my personality and aggravating her to no end two weeks before her menstrual cycle. And as an uh, OBGYN, uh, <clears throat> I didn't quite know what to do about that because all I knew how to do was to give birth control pills and antidepressants. And uh, if that didn't work, I was up the creek. So uh, thank God a patient started talking to me about bioidentical hormones. And in my effort to try and prove how uh, silly this concept was, I started to uh, investigate it. And uh, 12 years later, I'm out here lecturing about this. But uh, I, I got really interested in estrogen and progesterone. And um, I thought that was really the panacea. I thought uh, that you could uh, solve uh, and encourage world peace if you just put progesterone on everybody. But, um, well, you know, I, it, it, it sure made my house a lot peaceful, so I thought that we could take that over to the Middle East and we could do the same thing. But uh, anyway, I, uh, I, I, I quickly found that even though my patients were doing much better uh, with uh, balancing female hormones, uh, I still had patients who came, came in and said, you know, Doc, I'm feeling better, but I still have some fatigue and and I'm nervous and irritable and you know, I still have some depression and I can't concentrate that well, I'm apprehensive and I still have some weakness and feelings of frustrations and cravings and vertigo. And I say, is that all ma'am? She say, uh, no, I have some lightheadedness and some, you know, some insomnia and PMS and you know, my PMS is better. I want to thank you for what you, but I still have some headaches and muscle aches and and epigastric pain and you know I've been looking at that commercial about the purple pill do you think I should take the purple pill what do you know about the purple pill doc uh, and then I have some food allergies and then somebody told me I had uh, irritable bowel you know I had diarrhea what do you know <clears throat> now I had given her th progesterone so you know then what did you do well you do what is familiar to you and what was f familiar to me was a FSH, a serum thyroid, a CBC, a SMA7, a cholesterol, a ANA and, and, and be honest, you guys, when you order those tests, uh, what is the likelihood of those uh, tests to be uh, positive? Zero. And uh, on a patient like that. And so, uh, so why do you order those tests? Well, the reason why you order those tests so that you can go to lunch. Because if not, that patient is going to go over those symptoms over and over again. And you're going to be an hour late for the rest of your patients. And, and so that, that dis disrupts cortisol. Now... <clears throat> The patient's going to come back in, and you got to go over those tests, and those tests are going to be normal. Now what are you going to do? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to order an ultrasound, a CT scan, an upper GI, an endoscope, a laparoscope. Now what is that going to do for you? Well, it's going to get you to lunch, and two, it's going to keep that patient away for about six weeks, so that's how long it takes to order all those tests and get them done. Okay? Then the patient is going to come back again. And all those tests are going to be 100% what? Negative. So then what are you going to do? You're going to have to practice visitus interruptus. And visitus, visitus interruptus is you're going to have to write a prescription. And you're going to kick yourself because you're going to just be so upset that you miss something very important on that first uh, chemical analysis that you did, chemistry analysis. You're going, to, you're going to have missed that she had a cholesterol of 201. Because now you can prescribe Lipitor, okay? Now, and you know that Lipitor is going to take care of all of those problems that she had. Not, okay? And then you're going to give her the Primarin because of her hormone problems or whatever. You're going to give her the Synthroid even though her TSH is normal, the Hydrocodone for the aches and pains, the Prilosec for the epigastric pain, the Norvast for high blood pressure, the Glucophage because you think she has insulin resistance, Albuterol and Claritin for her allergies. Okay, let's everybody measure their cortisol. Okay, so let's see what I, okay, so, so we're down to the albuterol and claritin, and then you gotta give her the Zoloft because if she's not depressed, you're depressed because this patient keeps coming in your office. 
Okay? Now, why do we, now this lady's on 10 drugs now, and why is she on the 10 drugs, and why did you order those 10 drugs? Well, you ordered those 10 drugs because of popular thinking. That's what everybody else is ordering. And the problem with popular thinking is that it doesn't require you to think at all. It's easier to do what other people do and hope that they thought it out. And that's why we order those drugs, because it's on TV, everybody else is doing it. But when you really look at it, <clears throat> I'm sorry, when you really look at it, we've got a big problem. And, and because we don't understand what's going on with these patients, we have a lot of patients on popular drugs, and we have a patients with a lot of popular non-diagnoses. And, you know, it, it's amazing to me how we can consider a diagnosis of chronic fatigue. When a patient comes in, what is the requirement for the diagnosis of chronic fatigue? The patient has to come in and she has to say what? He or she has to say what? Doc, I am what? Tired all the time. Now, what does fatigue mean? It means tired. What does all the time mean? It means chronic. So a patient comes in and says she's tired all the time and we get to diagnose her with chronic fatigue. The patient is not asking you to regurgitate what she said in another form. She's asking you why is she tired all the time. The patient comes in and says, my muscles and joints hurt, and we tell them they have fibromyalgia. What does fibro mean? It means muscles and joints. What does myalgia mean? It means hurt. It means pain. Patient comes in and says she's depressed, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. What does a patient have to come in and say? I have trouble paying attention, and we tell them they have an attention deficit. Patient comes in and says, I have constipation and diarrhea. It seems like my bowels are irritated. What do we tell them they have? <laughs> it, it, it's amazing to me how we get away with that, and the patients take it. I, I mean, be honest. <clears throat> And so what I, what I try to get across is that the patient is not asking us to tell them what they told us. They're asking us to give them a reason why. And I think in anti-aging medicine that the most important thing, and we've heard it several times today, about stress. And, and I'm a real basic guy. I don't have any kind of new age devices or anything. I'm a very basic guy. And I think sometimes we have to go back to the basics. And the basics of most diseases is stress. And I think that we all understand that that's what's going on with that patient is stress. And if you don't, if you don't understand it, ask your front office, because they'll tell you about Ms. Jones, who always comes in, and how crazy her family is, and somebody who lives next door to her, and how she behaves at church and at the, at the PTA meeting, that, that she's under stress. She's had three husbands and you know, all this kind of stuff. Just ask your patients. They'll tell you. Now. A lot of times we try to pacify it and say it's just stress. There's nothing wrong with that patient, it's just stress. But look at the impact of stress. 43% of all adults suffer stress-related adverse health effects. 75 to 90%, this is what I want you to really look at, 75 to 90% of all visits to primary care physicians are for stress-related complaints or disorders. 75 to 90%. And I tell physicians when I'm talking to conventional physicians, if 75 to 90% of your patients had diabetes, you would go to every conference there was about diabetes. If 75 to 90% of your patients had hypertension, you go to every conference there is about hypertension. But 75 to 90 percent of the patients are walking in our office and they have stress-related complaints or disorders and we call stress just stress.